Well, I'm here at the studio with a photographer who should need no introduction, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to say, hello, Martin Parr, and how are you, and how are you enjoying the show? I'm enjoying it, yeah. It's interesting to see what's going on here. I mean, uh, I basically have one camera, one lens, and I don't really bother with this technical stuff, so um, it's another world to me, but okay. of course, I'm with people who are enthusiastic about photography, and that's the thing that counts. Absolutely. Now, I sneaked in to the last 10, 15 minutes of your talk yesterday, once I'd convinced the woman to let me in because I didn't have a ticket, very naughty of me. Now, the one thing that I was thinking from the end bit is you're a bit of a man of obsessions, aren't you? Do you think that's a fair comment? I think it's a fair comment, but I think anyone who's any good has to be obsessed. You know, all good photographers, all good artists have to be obsessed. You can't just, uh, I mean, basically what I'm doing with my life is I'm doing my hobby full time. So I was gonna say, you can't think of it as a hobby because a hobby is actually a good thing. But for the hobby to be successful, you've really got to be passionate and obsessed about it. There's no shortcuts. Even though it's very simple to take a photograph, it's also very difficult to actually take a good one. No, oh, absolutely. And, and I know that your work has been analysed and discussed, uh, well, literally till the cows come home. How do you see your work? What, 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 do you, what do you think that you bring to photography? Well, I'm interested in going out into the real world. And over the last 45 years that I've been photographing, the world has changed, I've changed, photography's changed. But basically, I'm interested in trying to show what normal people, ordinary people are doing. And in particular, leisure activities. Because the one thing that defines us probably more than anything else is what we choose to do with our free time. So I've been to beaches not only in Britain, but all around the world. I've looked at the whole business of tourism, the biggest industry in the world. And these really are the things that I'm looking at. I've been to supermarkets, I photograph food. I love to photograph day-to-day -day things, the things that most people wouldn't think are a good photographic subject. Absolutely, and I know um, you were showing, and you're going to show, because you're on at 11 today, I believe, um, you, you were showing some images from the beach. You were shooting with a, a telephoto. You were exploring how you could bring something different to the use of a telephoto. Now, I have a telephoto. I use it for wildlife. That's definitely not what you're doing. No, because what I'm doing is I think of people as being a, sort of another form of wildlife. OK. Like. And I'm using the beach as my laboratory. And over the, my career, I've always done that. So whenever I've had a new kit or a new lens or a new way of approaching for I wanted to explore, I go to the beach. Now, in art photography, the telephoto is not really regarded as something that people use. I mean, there's very few examples. People love wide angle or standard lens. Here in this show with the wildlife photographers, they love the telephoto, but it hasn't really been applied to the art and documentary world in the way that I think it's got to, it's got something to offer. That's really what I'm exploring now. Okay, and you know, when you're photographing on something like a beach and wandering around, now I, I do a little bit of street stuff, but it's quite a scary place to be when there are all those people around and you've got a camera. I once accidentally found myself on a nudist beach with a camera. That's a whole <laughs> other story we're not going to go into. But do you ever get yourself into situations where people aren't happy with your presence? Well, the beach has become more difficult, particularly because of the attitude towards children. I mean, 25, 30 years ago, people didn't think of it. But now we're very conscious of the, uh, of the uh, idea of photographing children. So yes, indeed, if I'm around a, a group of kids or something, I will go and talk to the parents. Or the advantage of the telephoto, you don't need to do that, in fact, you can, you know, at a distance. But yes, that's the one area in photography where social attitudes have really fundamentally changed quite dramatically, in fact. Now, obviously, you've been in photography for a, a long time. Um, how, how have you seen it change and, and where do you think it is today with the, with the world of digital as it is? I think it's, it's never been more exciting. There's more people who like photography, the platforms we have to share our photos, whether it's Instagram, Flickr, Snapchat, there's never been more. So the, the audience for photography has never been bigger or better. The price of that is we get many more bad photos. If you look at the 10 million photos that are loaded every day on this, that, and the other, most of them are pretty bad, okay? But in fact, we need a lot of bad photos to know what a good one looks like. So I say keep taking the bad photos, and then eventually, if you're serious and obsessed, you might get a good one. Okay, now that's interesting, it's all about bad photos. Now, I, you, you've done it, is it a book of images of yourself in different places around the world, shown in different ways? I think you, you'll have to explain it, you can, you can well, explain it better than me. I've done this project, which is what you saw yesterday, right. which I'm about to show again today, where I've been to different photo studios all around the world in the last 20 years. And photography's changed dramatically in that period, because, you know, I started, it was all analog, and now it's all digital. And not only that, but I've got a lot old, older, and so because I've had myself photographed, I've been like the volunteer that I've used, you can see how I've got old, my hair's grey, I'm not the young, handsome man I used to be. And photography's very good at showing ageing, in fact. And when you hear a woman say to you, oh, I never take a good photo, what they mean is they haven't come to terms with the fact that they've got older. 
and uh, they think they're still younger. So it's ruthless and accurate photography in that sense. Ruthless and accurate. Yes, it absolutely is. And one of the it things. It tells the truth. Well, and most photos in the world are trying to tell us lies. Okay. Well, We're surrounded by propaganda. You're, and, and, and that is essentially what you're about, is trying to show the truth. I'm trying to show my personal truth as opposed to the propaganda that most of us feed off. Even something like the family album is full of propaganda because everyone's got to be smiling, everyone's happy, you're allowed to take photographs at a wedding, but you can't take photographs at a funeral. Why is that? It's because we expect photography to show us how good the world is, how interesting it is. Fashion, advertising, all the pictures in the magazines that we're looking at, they're all a form of propaganda. So my job is to try and puncture that and show a personal truth and show things as I find them and as they really are. Now, I know um, today is particularly focused on pro photography here. There's a, a pro photography conference going on. What's that mean? You mean professional? Professional. Professional. Right. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Do you think it's um, harder to start out in life as a, as a professional if you're a young photographer now than it was when you started? It's easier, but it's also uh, harder because everyone can take a good picture now. You don't have to be uh, a technical genius to know how a camera works. You just put it on automatic. But if you've got, there's more outlets for photography, not so much in magazines, but remember there's a whole world now where people buy prints. Uh, that didn't happen 20, 30 years ago. So the art world has embraced photography. That's a good opportunity. So I think there are, you know, because the platform's got bigger and despite the digital age, that means there are more opportunities. But you're only gonna find the successful people who are the ones who are obsessed, passionate, enthusiastic. There's no room for laziness in this world. Photography is very transparent. You can see exactly how much effort has gone into photographs when you see a series. You know, it's just you can tell immediately what effort's gone in, and that effort is the thing that counts. Now, I know um, after the talk yesterday, I'm sure you had lots of questions from the crowd. Did you? Did, do you get kind of any really interesting ones? You think, well, where did that come from? Was there any yesterday? <laughs> no, no, everything I've heard, every question asked has been asked before. Just occasionally, someone will ask a question like. Um, do you prefer boiled eggs to poached eggs? That okay. I haven't heard before, but most of the questions are very familiar, and I can tell you exactly what the questions will be before they're even been asked. So what, what's even you... your questions? Oh well, no, fine. No, no, I, no, no, don't worry, Andrew. I'm not original. I'm not pretending no, to but, be. Uh... But, but what, what, what's the most, what kind of the most frequent question that you get asked after you've done a talk? Then how do you photograph people? Because people find it very difficult to photograph strangers. Um, what camera do you use? Okay, well, well, let's let's it's let's use like that. that then. So, so how do you do that? Because you because you know the communication. I mean, you're, a lot of your stuff, you're not communicating with them. I assume when you're doing kind of you know in the street. Um, well, there are different types. If you're photographing in a tourist location on a beach, you don't particularly need to speak to people. But I've just been doing a lot of work in the black country just down the road here, where the whole point of that exercise was to meet people, take portraits, uh, and find out their stories. So the meeting them was absolutely essential. So different types of work uh, involve a different sort of connection to the audience or, or the subject. No, absolutely. And but you, I mean, you must be fascinated by people. That, that's, of course. that's what it's all about for you, of isn't course. it? Of course. People are fantastically interesting. They're, you know, they're, they're always predictable yet unpredictable, eccentric and. Uh, 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 and of course we live in a country where we are pretty bonkers and I like that. I love photographing in England because you know, I sort of know it and yet at the same time I'm constantly surprised by the behaviour that I witness and I see. Okay, and as I said earlier, and you agreed, so I, I know I'm an okay territory here, you are a man of obsession. So what, what's obsessing you currently? Well, I'm obsessed with photography, but I also collect things. I collect photo books, uh, I've made many books. I even collect things like Saddam Hussein watches and uh, political ephemera. I have a big collection of Space Dogs ephemera, which are currently on show at the Barbican in London. Okay. So I have various things that I pick up on. But the, the sort of way of collecting books and objects and ephemera is very much like the notion of collecting images, if you like, you know, because I'm trying to make world, I'm trying to make sense of the world, and I do that by taking photographs, ordering them into books, into projects, into exhibitions, and that's how I really sort of, if you like, uh, you know, demonstrate my relationship to the world, this crazy and wonderful world that we live in. Okay, sounds great. I'm conscious of time because it's not going to be long until you're on there, and I know you need time to prepare. So, Martin, thank you very much for talking to us here. Pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome.